came before me that were influential to me, whether they knew it or not, right? There were artists like the, the streetscapers and artists that I looked up to and um, helped me, you know, uh, uh, move further my career. So I, I said, how can I do something like that in the show? So I came up with this idea of asking younger emerging artists um, uh, to participate in the show. And then I asked them who um, they were influenced. Thank you for being here. I know uh, we've, we've got a lot of poor artists, so I'm going to try to get you straight to the You were an OG graffiti uh, writer. Why aren't you like big time, like Red Nine, Revoke, and everybody else? And I said, well, because after 10 years, I sort of moved on. You know, but I was very highly influenced by New York, graffiti scene, uh, Future 2000, any of the Jean Michel Bastiat. I went to Otis. And in Otis Art Institute, my very first show was called Neo Expressionism, which is the movement that um, that Julian Stobel kind of created in the 80s. And I did it as a mamak because Basquiat was kind of he passed away, and nobody knew what that was. Nobody knew what graffiti. I was at Otis in '85. It was '84, and nobody knew what the hell graffiti was. I'm over here painting canvases with like lead, and they're all like, "What is this?" You know, way ahead of the time. You know, and, and I'm like. You know, the only ones that were there were b-boys and break dancers and all the artists were like, what is this, you know? And I think that was great that I'm always there in the beginning of something, you know? And then I kind of learn what I got to learn from that movement and share it with everybody else. And then I kind of move. And then that's where I met, from the murals, I met, you know, Wayne Healy, Beto, you know, all the La Roche, all these amazing muralists. And that sort of sucked me into that muralist Chicano world. I'm like, what is this Chicano stuff? I, mean, I, didn't even, I was just a b-boy, you know, trying to break that down, identifying my culture, what is Chicanismo? So I got in that little bit for 10 years, and I did murals, over 500 murals in schools, and exhibited with all the Chicano guys. The only one I didn't get to meet was Carlos Almaraz, but everybody else, you know, that was only, was only, you know? And I think that also created a little bit of like the whole, well, are you a graffiti artist or are you a Chicano artist? And this is way ahead when they were separate. Right, right. Graffiti writers were exhibiting together, Chicanos were exhibiting together, and then some people were like, say, Xander, he's not even Mexican, home. Look at his name, Xander, eh? You know, and I didn't get in the show because my name would be Xander. And then suddenly they go, oh, he is Mexican. That's his graffiti name. And then remember, then all the, the, the taggers going over murals, and I was there with Magoo going, look, let's find a neutral ground because graffiti writers are they're eventually going to come together, and then comes street art. Yeah, street art! Because I have to reinvent myself, took what I learned, and did 10 years of abstract art. And while I was doing my abstract art, I got very spiritual, very spiritual. Not just, you know, Christianity, but Buddhism, and a lot of other stuff. And I had to be me, I feel like I'm always painting for somebody else. If I did a mural for graffiti, I felt like it was for the writers. If I did a mural for the Chicanos, it was for the Chicanos. If I did an abstract, it was for the collectors. And I said, you know what? That's it. I want to fuse it all together and now paint for me. <laughs> Not for anybody, whether it sells, whether it goes to the museum, get it. I don't care. This is me. So what I do, I pack up my bags and I move to Lancaster. Way after the boonies, the high, the high desert, nada. You know what I mean? Nothing there. And right there, I just sit in my studio and I said, I'm going to start from scratch with, you know, putting everything that I have ever learned and put it all away and just start from scratch. So I started doing a series of 100 oil paintings, 100 oil paintings, just from anything and everything that I can remember from all the influences, from every conversation I had with Crime or Prime or Big Slee or whoever, Red Knot, and put it in a canvas and I did another one, another one. And what came out was this which what I call triunity. Why triunity? Because I feel like the graffiti represented the body. You know, so, you know me, I want to write because of me. You know, it's all about my fame, I want street fame, I want my name. And I felt like Chicano was culture, my ancestry, and that's the soul. And I felt that like spirituality was, you know, what's gonna happen when you die? Where are you going? Are you gonna spend eternity in the cosmos? Are you gonna be going to hell or Jesus? Everybody, you know, throw this. So I put all three together, and now I call this series for unity. And the spirituality is the abstraction, it's still there. The graffiti, the, you know, the can, you know. This is called Conversation with Death. And the reason why I did this piece is because a lot of my friends were dying in COVID. This was done in 2020, like in COVID, and, and uh, people were dying, you know, left and right. I said, we're all gonna die, that's reality. 
So when you're at that deathbed and you're facing death, what are you going to say? How was your life? What did you do? What, 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 you know, do you have any regrets? Did you live a good life? And that's me having that conversation with my own reality that I will die to. You know, and, and, you know, and I actually got the show exhibited at a hospice where the, all the, you know, it was a part of a show about nurses that help people die at a hospice. And I said, oh my God, that's going to be me so big. That's reality, you know what I mean? So, you know, then that's where it's all here. This one is called Waiting on Time, which is kind of similar. The concept of I'm getting older, you know, I'm hitting, you know, my 60s, you know, and I'm like, man. What a journey, what a ride. This one like is, is uh, all men I created equal. Obviously, I did a lot of uh, murals for all the cultures, for African-American culture, Chinese, Filipino. I did so many murals for everybody. Yeah. And I remember that the, I grew up in South Central, so I, I, I was really close to the African-American culture. I'm actually a Shaolin Kung Fu practitioner for yes. 30 years, so I was raised Chinese <laughs> with the Shaolin. But um, All Men Created Equal, I did it because um, every time I'd seen a show or whatever, everybody always talked about ethnicity, culture. We love, and, you know, we love culture, and that's why, to me, All Men Created Equal has to do with the spirituality component of it. It's not what you see, and that's why I started, this was one of the early ones where I was actually doing actual real portraits. And, and that's when I said, wait a minute, people, every time I do a portrait like this, people say, who is that? And who's that supposed to be? Or is that, is that so-and-so? Or is that so -and, -so? and I said, Man, I can't, I gotta simplify, I gotta strip the facial and the actual identifiable features of a face and sort of give it a mask. And I did the series where it was just the, the person holding a mask. And eventually that mask got closer and got closer and got closer until the mask fused to the person. And now you have no features. And now all the new work that I'm doing now is sort of featureless and has a male, female. I do a lot of work about the relationships we have with people because without people we almost seem like to be what's the word like you you don't exist in the same way as somebody says does a painting exist if it doesn't have a viewer it needs a gallery you know so in the same way we need other people and now instagram and all that all social media is sort of blowing it out something i think maybe out of proportion where if you if it's always this you know and, and that's how i met you through a zoom thing and like i'll oh, zoom on that i'm on zoom you know the, the, the co member, and, and now we're talking about art. I'm like, ah, where's the, where's the, like here, we're here, you know, we're talking, we're interacting. To me, that is the part of humanity that I love about my existence of being an artist is that I get to share and get to talk about it, you know. So, so that's what these works are all about spirituality, uh, soul, culture, uh, everything, you know. So, the whole ball of wax is all everything I've ever experienced. Bam! In a painting. <laughs> wow. Question? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so they look like they're dancing, and they're kind of frozen in different forms. Um, I wanted them to be all just like one color, so there's no like uh, identifying the like race or like socioeconomic background. Like it's more just about the form. And so all of them um, kind of are in a different dancing position. This one's called To Be Free. This one is called Rise Above, and this one is called The Banker. And so it's kind of like a positive message, and then I always use like vibrant colors. So a lot of my artwork, like the cohesiveness is like the bright colors. Um, so yeah, that's, that's when I started in 20. So, so giving the viewer a feeling like they know where they're at when they're walking into that space. Typically it's car related because I own a low rider, I work on low riders, I paint above people in the low rider community. Um, I've been meaning a piece this large again because I haven't done it since then. I think now my large canvases are cars. <laughs> You know, all these life experiences, you know, were like, I was like in the university, and thank God I made it out the other end, because not a lot of my friends have, a lot of folks I know. 
But then art, because I was at the center, I was blessed with the gift of art since I was a young man. That's what I leaned on to, to escape all those, all those painful dark moments of life. But at the age of 16, I was about uh, 17, I was the very first young East Coast street sweeper. And when he was there with Teo, I was in East Lake Central Dad's home office. I told him to do these murals and we had to culture, which I never had to do that in the college. So this subject right here, her name is Rosalinda, and uh, she's one of the students that comes to the Homeboy Art Academy. And so the, the reason it's titled Paradise Lost, Paradise Regained, because it's an allusion to John Milton's poem, Paradise Lost, and his other poem, Paradise And Game. so when it talks, you know, as Fabian said earlier, some of the little homies and the homegirls are always like, paint me, paint me, no, paint me. So she kept asking me to paint her, and then one day,